about attracting Purple Martins to the landscape, and I think the first thing is finding the right location. Yes, and I think you guys have found a fantastic location here. Mm -hmm. uh, what, one thing that's very important is to have a site that's very open. Mm -hmm. Martins don't like to nest close to trees. Uh, I, ideally, you'd want to put your house in a place where there's no obstructions for 40 to 60 feet. Okay. Uh, a lot of that is to give the martins some protection against predators like hawks that may come in and attack them. They can see these hawks coming and they can build up, the martins can build up speed and fly away. Okay. So we want to be distant from trees where the hawks perch. Is there a, a good uh, ideal distance from those? Uh, I'd say 40 to 60 feet okay. is, is ideal. The, the farther the better in general. Yeah. Uh, also, it's it's not critical to have Martin houses close to water, but if you can get them close to mm -hmm. water, it's great. Water adds to the openness of the area. Also, we have a lot of aquatic insects that Martins feed on mm -hmm. that are going to be coming out of this pond all during the nesting season. Perfect. And of course, it gives them access to water. Martins drink on the wing. They don't come to a bird bath like a lot of our so other songbirds do. They'll actually fly along and skim along the oh. surface of the water and pick up water that way. That'll be fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> You'll, you'll enjoy it. Yeah. The other piece, because uh, martins are accustomed to humans, we need to have our location within, was it 100 feet of human activity? Yeah, or? yeah, that, that's one of the interesting things about martins. It's just is kind of a testament to how uh, adapted they are to people. They like to be within, say, 30 to 100 feet of human activity, either a house or a park. Uh, sidewalk, just something that has some human activity. That human activity, I think, helps to detract predators. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why martins kind of gravitate to humans. Uh, you also have an advantage here of having utility wires nearby. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want those util utility wires right over the house, but here they're about 40 feet away. So it gives the martins an additional perch site. They can watch mm -hmm. their their box. They can watch from predators mm -hmm. while sitting over there on those wires. Well, we've had a uh, house here before. There's an old house here that um, Dr. Martin picked this site and it wasn't easily raised and lowered. We talked about in a previous segment that you want it easily managed and so we lost our Martins and we're looking to attract another colony here. When do we want to put our house out and get started to attract those birds? Well, typically you want to get your house out in, in mid-February. Uh, martins come through in, in sort of two waves. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people will hear about Martin scouts. We used to call them scouts. The, these so-called scouts are actually the adult birds. They're birds that are two years or older mm -hmm. that are the first ones to arrive in the spring. And they typically come in and look for the house where they nested the previous year. So they'll go back to their old house. They'll go back yeah. to their old house in most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and they usually come in about the last week of February, the first week of March. Then there'll be a second wave of Martins, and these tend to be the yearling birds, the year old birds. Uh, those are the colonizers. Those are the ones that set up new houses. Mm -hmm. They come back to the general area where they were raised, but usually not the same box. Okay. Uh, and by having your house out at the end of February, you, you catch both waves in mm -hmm. case you get you know, some older birds that want to experiment with a new location, perhaps they weren't successful the previous year and they might want to try a new box. And you'll also have it for that second wave of young birds that comes in at the very end of March or the first week of April. Okay. Now with a big house like ours, we don't want to have all of the openings available immediately, right? Because then we're just battling uh, sparrows and starlings. That is mm -hmm. true. And most houses will come with uh, plugs or some kind of a baffle mm -hmm. that you can put over the hole. And what I would do is put put the house up with all of the holes plugged until you see Martin's hanging around your area or landing on the box. When mm -hmm. you see that happen, then you can take out some of the plugs, uh, wait another week or two. If, if more Martins hang around, then take out more plugs. Okay, just uh, helps with the management. Yeah, helps with the management and keeping the mm -hmm. sparrows down. There's one more thing we can do to try to attract them, and this is kind of interesting. We could play their song. Tell yeah. me about that. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is kind of a new development in the last few years, but people have taken recordings of Purple Martin songs. They call it the dawn song. It's the, the song that the males sing early in the morning. And they'll play that tape um, or, or CD or whatever it is. They'll play that recording uh, to attract Martins. And it actually seems to work pretty well. A lot of people swear by it in, in attracting Martins the first time. And we can find that at the Purple Martin 
Conservation Association. Yeah, right? there's a wonderful organization called the Purple Martin Conservation Association. They sell a lot of the materials that you need for attracting martins, and their, their website is purplemartin.org. Perfect. Well, thank you, Mark. Oh, thank you.